Um, so the Hands Ontario study stands for Health and Aging and Neurodegenerative Diseases and, uh, in Ontario. Um, and it's really built on everything we've talked about so far. So we have the, the foundational study um, and we're aiming to move from just doing detailed phenotyping, detailed characterization to what we call the quadruple aim, where we're trying to get better outcomes for people. We're trying to make things better for the patients. We're trying to make things better for the healthcare system. And we're trying to make things more efficient for clinicians. And so uh, building on uh, the original founder, uh, founding study, uh, the goal towards putting the patient right smack at the center of this, driving all of it, um, and involving patients and our community advocates uh, in even setting up the questions from the ground up, we've developed Hands Ontario. And the goal of Hands Ontario uh, is really to, uh, to support those three levels that we were talking about before. Basic science and discovery on a molecular, genetic, uh, pathological level. Uh, so that we can actually unlock some more important clues to this disease, but also using the genetics and the serum molecular information to help guide an individual's care, to help guide uh, treatment interventions or, or clinical trials, characterizing free living behaviors, characterizing what's happening in the home and in the community, as you see here, um, pairing that with uh, clinical data, consent to be recontacted, and the administrative health records means that we can follow people uh, through their healthcare journey. And so Hands Ontario is really built to be working on all of these across these multiple levels, all with that fundamental goal of partnering with patients. So we call this a research care partnership, where we want to work together uh, to so everybody gets something. Uh, so participants, volunteers, patients get uh, something that's helpful to them. Um, physicians, hopefully, who are caring for them can get some information that's useful to them. Um, basic scientists can be getting some discovery work, and we can understand uh, better how to design and optimize the health system and healthcare funding to support people. So the idea here is wins across multiple levels with the patient experience, uh, the lived experience at the center. We have three objectives for Hands Ontario. The first is to try to identify these unique cohorts, groups of people by their genetic and molecular markers and by their free living behavioral profiles and understand how these go together. Um, and this is really getting to Dr. Maselis's comment that uh, when we put people in clinical buckets, those buckets aren't as pure as people would like to think. And we want to understand how the genetics and how the serum markers all relate to day-to-day -day function. The second objective is to look at how those three factors, the genetics, the molecular markers of what's happening right now, and the day-to-day -day behaviors in the community, these multiple genetic, multi-dimensional different types of measures, um, relate to adverse outcomes. So this means the need for long-term care or home care. This means um, emergency room visits, falls, hospitalizations, even fatalities. We want to understand what puts people at the highest risk so that we can target interventions to make those changes. And the third objective is as we're collecting this data for these research purposes, can we actually provide that data in a way back to participants that's useful, that's helpful, that can guide their day-to-day -day management and care, that can give feedback, as Larry said, um, you know, m how I'm moving in a day, you know, should we be moving more? Should we be moving less? Are we at risk of falls if we're moving a certain way? Uh, when should we be changing our diet because we're at risk of choking? These kinds of questions that can actually make a real difference to people day to day. Um, and that might even be able to collect data that's useful to caregivers or physicians um, about what happens in the 99% of the time that you're not in the doctor's office. Uh, can we digest that and package it in such a way that helps patients explain their experience to their physicians or helps their physicians understand some of the challenges and gaps that are happening uh, in the community. So our framework is really building on the initial Andre one study, using the tools developed and validated through AIM-2 that you're gonna hear about a little bit later today um, for at-home data collection in the community, free living behaviors as we call it. 
partnering with patients and caregivers at the center, putting that data up for, uh, for collaboration, so anonymized data um, that is open to researchers in Canada and around the world, and linkage to the robust administrative data we have in Ontario. Our core study elements that we're asking all sub-studies and all core participants to, to get involved with is wearing some of these remote monitors, uh, biosensors to measure free living behaviors in day-to-day -day, uh, natural environments, um, giving a blood sample to facilitate the genetic and biomarker studies, provide some minimal clinical data on how you're doing right now uh, and how, uh, what your diagnosis is, medications and so on. Um, and then agree that we can recontact you to be part of some of these sub-studies, uh, provide a health card number that will be stored, uh, encrypted, and linked to ICES, um, and allow us to release not the ICES, not the personal health data, but the other anonymized data uh, to collaborate with, with investigators elsewhere. To start this process, we're building a core and on that core, we're building some disease specific projects as well. So the core that, that I've just described will be collected across cohorts. The individual studies will actually nuance and modify some of these uh, core elements to answer specific questions within a disease. So we're gonna be able to go between diseases. We're also gonna be able to target questions within a disease. So you're gonna hear a little bit later today uh, about the Parkinson sub-study and the ALS sub-study and the long-term care sub-study, um, where we're really, uh, in addition to collecting the, the basic minimum core amount of remote wearable uh, biosensor data, for example, we're gonna be modifying that wear pattern uh, so that we can actually assess longitudinal change over time in people with ALS uh, to identify risks for falls or aspirations or need for more uh, support in breathing at night and so on. Um, so that's one example, and you're gonna hear more details about that. Uh, but the data from the sub-studies will be over and above that core data that's collected across uh, all cohorts. Our goal ultimately um, is to be having targeted uh, cohorts, uh, targeted studies, and eventually to be moving these if we're hopefully fortunate enough to get funded in future rounds through OBI and the government, uh, would be to build these towards uh, intervention studies to, to change and improve outcomes. Uh, but for now, the goal is to actually perform these studies to collect that data and provide the feedback to individuals, and that would be the intervention. Um, and we're, we're really hoping that this partnership, because I, I think we, we see it truly as a partnership between uh, clinicians, researchers, uh, persons living with these diseases, and those that are important to them, so caregivers and family members. Um, and this partnership, I think, is going to advance all of these aims that, that we've just described.